Welcome to Jamie TV, thank you very much for tuning in. Today we're going to take a look at Snakebud, a 16 step AUV3 MIDI sequencer for iPhone or iPad. It has excellent randomization features and in many ways it reminds me of the kind of sequencer that you would find in a modular system. Now it only sequences one note at a time but because it uses so little DSP you can use as many instances of it as you might need. Now today, we're not going to piss pants about, hold on to your underpants, we're going to get stuck straight in and have a look at how it works. Okay, let's open up Snakebud, and in here you'll see that there are 16 noggins, as I like to call them. And these 16 noggins, they represent the 16 potential notes of this sequencer. Before I do anything else, let me just show you this. In settings, we're going out by default on MIDI channel 1. And that's where you would go to change it if you wanted to add another instance to send to a different instrument. But you'll see here, I've got Wave Shaper receiving MIDI information from Snakebud on MIDI channel 1. Alright, let's go back in. We'll press play. And so you're seeing the snake travel across the nogginses, playing that C3 note, one after the other. And if I go to here, where it says sequence, I can choose from one of 56 different sequences to send the snake in a different direction around the 16 notes. And if I go here, I can randomize which snake sequence is chosen. This app really, the beauty of it all really lies in the randomization. Okay. Right, now, let's have a look at this top menu here. Here we have the step options. Now, with this, I can remove one of the nogginses from the sequencer, as long as my mouse will let me. What it's not doing is putting in a rest. It's not putting in a rest, it's just simply removing that note, and the sequencer will just move to the next available note. If I go to note here, I can change the note that this noggin is playing. And as you will see, it's moving chromatically. And it's moving chromatically from C3 round to B5. Now back to settings, and you'll see here, the minimum octave is set to C3 and maximum to two octaves above that, I think is the best way to say that. And here I can choose a scale. So let's just choose, we'll keep it real simple today. Let's just go with C major. And now when I move this, you'll see that I can only select notes from C major. So here I can dial in some fabulous notes. Okay, now let's see if the random note generator can generate a better sequence of notes than me. Can't be difficult. Yeah, see, it did. Now what we can also do here is we can change the rate at which the sequencer moves. Now it's going to move in time with AUM, but we could make it go half as quickly or half as quickly again or super slow or as you will see here numerous degrees in between those points we can go super fast or we can go so fast that only the flash can actually hear the notes I want it a bit quicker than that okay right now gate this will change the length of each note and we can of course randomize that too And velocity will change the strength of each note, the volume of it if you like. 
which can of course also be randomised. Now probability will introduce a chance that a note may not play. So it's 30% likely to play. That one's 71% likely to play. So if you do some of this, you're going to end up with a sequence where sometimes a note will play, sometimes it won't play. And if you make them all random probabilities like this, then it's going to be a bit different every time, which is really cool. And we can randomize that too. Okay, now let's put all these notes back in. I need to go to step. We'll put them back in. Okay, right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomize everything. So it will randomize the snake sequence and the uh, step, whether the uh, note is included or not, what the note is, the gate, the velocity, and the probability of it occurring. And again. And again. Now you can see that there's great potential there for you to randomly sort of come up with a really cool progression of notes. And when you find something that you like, you can of course save it by saving it inside of AUM. But if you kind of feel like you'd like to use the randomization, but you don't really want the notes to be too short, you never want them to be too short, or you never want them to be too long, or you never want them to be too quiet or too loud. If you go into settings, you can go down here, and under this heading here, randomizer, you can set limitations for um, the minimum setting for the gate, or the maximum setting for the gate. Same with the velocity randomizer, and the probability randomizer. So that's all pretty cool. And we can change the octave range of the notes. Let's make it a much more drastic range of notes and come back and press the randomization of all again. So there we're getting some much lower notes and some higher notes in. Okay, right, uh, something else I really want to mention before I forget is we can make the patterns, which I haven't told you about yet, we can make the patterns move along by sending CC messages to the app. Now they're by default set to be received uh, CC number 10, but that can be changed here, so you're not limited by that. So now I better tell you about the patterns. All right, so come down here. This is pattern one. If I go here and press the plus sign, now we're just back to C1 on everything. So let me just randomize all of that. And I've created a second pattern that I don't like. So let's do it again. That's better. Okay. I could, of course, have gone in and chosen a different scale for the randomization of this pattern, but, you know, this will do us for now. And then I can just toggle between the two patterns. I can do that manually, or like I was trying to explain, when I was in the menu, you can send some CC messages to the app to make these patterns move along when you want them to.
One last thing that I must tell you about Snakebird before I forget like a stupid old hippie is that many of the parameters in the app are exposed and there's a lot you could do with that but the first thing that leaps to mind for me is that you could maybe map a controller to some of the parameters and you could maybe live jam, you could create sequences on the go, randomize stuff, move between patterns and it sounds like a lot of fun and that's something I do intend to have a go with myself. And on a personal note, this app is something I probably wouldn't buy for myself. Random note generation is not something that I'm really attracted to and yet I found myself having loads of fun with it. I really enjoyed it. It's a great app and I did get completely lost in it. So I do highly recommend it and I hope that I've done a decent job of explaining how it works. If you do have any questions about the app though, then comment below the video. I will reply and I will help you. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you out with the app on screen and also Stepbud on screen. I'm not an expert on Stepbud, I've not had time to get really deep into it yet, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on it, but I have managed to successfully get the patterns in Snakebud moving between from one to the next and back again with Stepbud. So I'm going to have it on the screen so that if you want to check my settings, copy my settings and recreate what I've got going on there, then you're very welcome to do that. Under the video, you'll find all the information about how you can check out my website, my music, my Patreon, my merchandise and all that stuff, how you can help out the channel if you wish to do so. Until my next video, be good people, be kind, be good, make lots of music and do not piss your pants about. See you later. Thank you.